Howdy there folks, I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs and I'm here to show you how to get a faster web browsing experience using a free tool called Google DNS. This is a really amazing way to increase the speed in which you can be productive because websites just flat out load faster. Now if I go to google.com, I am requesting a DNS lookup. Now if you don't know what DNS is, it stands for Domain Name System. I have an IP address, you have an IP address, and what an IP address is, is it is a static number assigned to myself as an identifier. No two people in the entire world have the same IP address. What IP addresses allow you to do is have your own unique address. Now, conversely, Google.com and every other website in the world has an IP address. You may not notice it because you go to google.com or you go to theverge.com or you go to bing.com. No one goes to bing.com, but if you did, you'd go to bing.com. And that is actually a number. It's an IP address and it's masked by what's called a vanity URL. Try this. Open your web browser uh, to a new page and in the URL field, type 74.125.224.72. When you press enter, google.com loads. Now, what happens is google.com is a vanity URL. Snazzylabs.com is a vanity URL. And every time I want to go to one of these websites, you're doing what's called a DNS lookup. Your ISP, your internet service provider, yours may be Comcast or Quest, mine is CenturyLink. And what CenturyLink says to me, what I say to CenturyLink is I say, I want to go to google.com. And then CenturyLink says, okay, this guy wants to go to google.com. We have to find the address or the number uh, or the IP address of that website. So they need to find 74.125.224.72 if I want to go to google.com. And every time I go to a website, it does what's called a DNS lookup. Now, these take a certain amount of time and there is what's called a ping time. It's a delay between your ISP, between you saying, hey, I wanna go here and your ISP actually loading the website for you because that ping time is the website saying, okay, this guy wants to go here, where, where even is that? We need to find the number. And they do that all automatically. But the advantages to using Google DNS is they have everything cached and they continually update it. And a lot of ISPs, including mine, CenturyLink, don't focus on keeping up to date with the latest and greatest DNS hardware. So while you may be able to stream Netflix in full 1080p, no problem, Google DNS can actually help increase the speed in which your web pages load because there is a smaller ping time. There's not as much delay between you saying, hey, I wanna go here, and your ISP saying, here you go. So, I wanna show you how to apply Google DNS to your computers and your iPhones and your Macs and your Windows uh, to make sure that you can optimize your web browsing experience. Now, the most seamless way to do this is to apply the DNS settings to your router. Mine is located at 192.168.0.1. Now, mine is a Quest router and it's a relatively new router. Many routers do not have this graphical user interface where you can quickly change and modify settings. But if you do, yours is probably located at this type of address, 192.168.0.1 or 0.0 or 0.10 or 10.0. Uh, there are very, very basic numbers. Now, when you go to uh, advanced setup and you go to DCHP settings or DHCP settings, sorry, and you find the DNS values, rather than having dynamic DNS values where your ISP selects the browsers for you, you're gonna say use Google's DNS servers, which are located at 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. Now this is all well and good, this is the best way to do it, but maybe you do not know how to access your browser, or excuse me, your router, or maybe you don't own your network connection. Maybe you're renting or maybe you're a kid and you don't want to mess everything up or you do not have access to this page. Well, you can actually modify the settings right on your computer. And you're going to have to do this to every device you have, but you can still do it without tampering with your actual network preferences. On the Mac, if you go to System Preferences and click the Network button, you're going to find the actual type you're connected to. Uh, if I was on an iMac, I'd probably be connected via Ethernet. If I'm on a MacBook, probably connected via Wi-Fi, but you're gonna to wanna to find the green radio bubble. This is the type or the connection you're connected on. When I am on this section, I am going to go down to the Advanced tab. And you may have to enter administrative privileges if this area is locked, but go to Advanced 
and click the third tab from the left, which is DNS. Now your DNS servers, there's probably only gonna be one, and it's probably going to be 192.168.something.something. We are going to change that to Google's DNS. We have two IPv4 addresses and two IPv6 addresses. Uh, IPv6 is a newer technology. There are billions of numbers versus just hundreds of millions of numbers. We're running out of uh, IPv4 servers, but IPv6, we're not going to run out ever. So that's lucky. But um, there are some compatibility issues with some websites using IPv6 addresses. So you for sure want to enter IPv4 and you can enter IPv6 if you want. You can enter as few or as many of these as you want. You may experience different load times if you enter more servers. So the servers as follows are 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. .4. Those are the IPv4 addresses. And the IPv6 addresses are these two, and these are a lot longer, so I'm gonna put those in the video description below for you to enter or copy and paste into your actual settings. But once you've done this, and once you've put them in the order you'd like, I would do IPv4 addresses first. Press OK. And then what you're going to need to do is press Apply. Mine's grayed out because I didn't change anything, but once you press Apply, you are set and ready to go. Everything works just like you need it to work. But let's say you're on a Windows machine. All you have to do, is go into your uh, start menu and click control panel and then click network and internet. Click network and sharing center and then on the left panel here you'll see change adapter settings. Click that and then you'll find the method in which you're connected to the network. I'm connected uh, by a local area network. I'm actually in bridge mode because I'm running parallels but it thinks I'm on an ethernet network. If I was on Wi-Fi it would say local area wireless network. Either or you know the one you're connected to, right click and go down to properties. Now there's this networking tab, that's the only tab available, and you'll find the IPv4 and the IPv6. If you double click these, you can choose to uh, use the following IP addresses rather than obtaining them automatically. As we remember, they're 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. .4. Now Windows is a little bit finicky and they want you to provide a subnet mask, which is the default subnet, uh, subnet mask, which is two. 55.0.0.0. Uh, you press OK, and then you press OK, and you're set. Now, if you want to add uh, IPv6 settings, uh, same thing, double click those and copy and paste the long IPv6 addresses that are in the description below. That's all you have to do. Pretty basic, right? But what if I want to do this on my iOS device? Still, very, very easy. All you have to do is uh, open your iOS device, go to settings, go to Wi Fi and see the little blue radio bubble right there? Click that and you'll be able to enter your DNS settings. I've already done so, 8.8.8.8. Now this is a little bit more of a pain because you will have to enter this for every Wi-Fi network that you're on. But it also remembers it. So if you go to the coffee shop all the time or if you're on your home Wi-Fi all the time, it will remember this. So you only have to enter it once. But for every new Wi-Fi hotspot you're on or every Wi-Fi hotspot you haven't entered these DNS values on, you are going to have to do that. I do recommend that on an iOS device, you enter an IPv4 address, which is either 8.8.8.8 or 8.8.4.4, simply because these seem to be a lot more reliable than the newer IPv6 addresses on iOS. But that's it. That's all you got to do. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, that can increase your download speeds, or not your download speeds, they'll stay exactly the same, uh, because you're not actually increasing your internet, you're just decreasing that ping time. So hopefully you'll be able to load web pages noticeably faster than you were before. If for whatever reason it seems slower, which it shouldn't, or if for whatever reason it doesn't work, you can simply delete those IP values and go back to the way it was before. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.